So within R82, one of the new thing is, or one of the big new thing is Elastic Excel. So Elastic Excel is the new clustering technology for checkpoint appliances. Uh, it doesn't work for all appliances, but it works for the new larger appliances, not the absolute smallest ones. It's not yet supported for software based. It's not yet supported for open service as well. It's possible to lab within the virtual environment and try it out for yourself. So I haven't played around with Elastic Excel other than in a checkpoint pre-built lab. Um, so it's not much to talk about. And I've been trying to figure out like how to make the best possible video for Elastic Excel. And this will not be it. Um, this will be a multiple part Elastic Excel. And as I haven't played with it before, it will be learning by labbing, like trying to figure it out and more or less come up with a design and then try to do an initial installation and just see how it goes. So first of all, working with Elastic Excel, um, I have two appliances. I have two, two Checkpoint 6400 appliances that I was planning to use for this. Um, so the first thing that I, I checked on like, okay, what is the pre-requirements for this? So the pre-requirements when it comes to like Elastic Excel network design. So here we have both of the firewall nodes. And if we check like one and uh, number one, that's the smart console. And if we check um, A, what does A stand for? A stands for management interface. So the smart console and the SMS or the security management server needs to reach the Elastic Excel cluster on the management interface. So they represent the management interface here with the management switch that is connected to the management interfaces. It says here. And then we have uh, B, C and D. So that would be synchronization and external network and internal network. So more or less you need four interfaces. So one dedicated for sync, one dedicated for management, and then one for internal and then one for external. So one thing that many people is using is VLANs. So you're using a trunk and then you're using VLANs to split this up. So let's see if that's first of all supported at all, because uh, it's actually not, uh, not for all interfaces. So you see here, Elastic Excel important notes. So first of all, we need to do a clean install or a factory reset. So it's not possible to upgrade or change an Elastic Excel cluster today uh, or change a cluster Excel cluster to an Elastic Excel cluster. And then you can maximum have three cluster members per Elastic Excel sites, and then you can have two sites. So in total, you can have six members within one of these clusters, so to say. And then we require at least four interfaces for each cluster Excel member. So here we have a dedicated management interface. And that will be the management port of the physical appliance that is used. And then we will have a dedicated sync interface. And this will also be the dedicated sync interface present on the appliance. So they are marked specifically with management and sync. So these are the one that we need to use. And then it says the sync port of all Elastic Cluster members in the same Elastic Excel cluster must be connected to the same Layer 2 broadcast domain. And the same Layer 2 broadcast domain, it means the same VLAN. So it needs to be the, the same physical switch or a VLAN that is spread across 
multiple switches and but but it cannot be routed um only one cluster excel is supported in the same only one cluster excel support in the same layer two broadcast domain connecting sync so what this means is that if you have multiple cluster excel clusters they need to have dedicated vlans per uh, sync so this this is i mean this is normal you have you have a dedicated sync network for more or less all ha clusters or all clusters you don't want to share sync interface that can cause issues uh, but see here also configure the sync interface as a vlan trunk is not supported so this means that you need to use a physical port to a physical port within a switch and then this switch port can of course be an access port meaning it's it's untagged so um, you can still use vlan on the switch but on the interface on the appliance it needs to be the physical interface um, all traffic over the sync interface is sent in clear text it's not encrypted and then it also says cluster excel automatically configure the ip address of the sync interface okay but you can change the ip address if you want to so what is this for ip address that is actually used 192.0.2.0 24 so it's, it sounds like a public IP address, but it's actually like this. So if we start for this specific IP address, we get like, okay, this is something special about. So of course you recognize like the 10 slash eight, that's a private interface. And then you have the carrier grade NAT. This is something that service providers use for like cell phone networks, etc., to get a lot more public IP addresses. But we see here that this is a test interface. This is a test network. So these are networks that cannot be routed to the internet. And therefore you can use it multiple times. And because it's locally within one VLAN, and it can and it cannot be routed on the internet it will not be conflicting with anything it may be conflicting with other clusters but it shouldn't show anywhere so you can use the same sync ip network for multiple clusters as long as they are in different vlans that is a requirement at least that is a anyway a requirement so why not uh, personally when I do sync interfaces on other uh, checkpoint clusters, I use the 169.254 uh, addresses and just take out the slash 28 or whatever for, for sync because they are not routable and uh, they are unique. They should not be used anywhere, so it's perfect. So I think this is okay network to use. Um, there, It's not so much sense of changing it but you can if you want to. An external interface, you, you select and configure the interface. So you can have whatever, an internal interface, you select whatever. And cluster Excel cluster assign a unique MAC address for these data interfaces. And they do not rename the interface. So why they, why they say this do not rename the interfaces, it's because they actually rename the interfaces for both the management port and the sync port. Uh, so it says here, so the management interface becomes a bond called mag1 and the sync will become um, and renamed to ethernet1 sync and also a bond. So that means that you can I guess you can add different, I guess you can add multiple uh, interfaces to this bond. Uh, I haven't tried, I haven't checked so much. Um, but I will also assume that big appliances maybe have 
dual sync interfaces or dual uh, dual management interfaces. For example, this one, uh, 29,200, it has two sync ports and it has two management ports. So yes, you can have a bond and the large appliances has multiple of these interfaces. So that's good. The small ones, they only have one sync port and one management port. I don't know if you can add any interface you want to it. This is something that we need to try. So the current state of the lab is like this. And if we compare to like a CCSA, this is very similar. And we are using the management port and we're using the Ethernet one and we have the sync. So more or less we have physically it's connected how Checkpoint wants it to be connected. So if you're unsure about something when it comes to installation, I have started to use the Copilot virtual assistants a lot actually. So sometimes it's hard to find like the documentation that you want and then you can more or less ask the, the AI Copilot if you're a CCSP partner to like guide you where to find things or uh, give you an instruction how to install something. So for example, if we want to like figure out like how to actually install Cluster Excel, if we don't find the SK for it, we can just write, um, please provide a guide on how to install Elastic Excel for the first time. Let's see if it works. <laughs> I hope it does. Uh, I actually been using it a lot now when I'm studying because I'm writing an exam in a few days, hopefully I pass, um, to like figuring out. Sometimes it's hard to understand what checkpoint actually means. And then you can take some other stuff and just ask this, uh, this AI co-pilot on how to fix things. So here we have a detailed look on how to actually do it. Um, so I think that we should just try. But that will need to be a different video because I recorded this like 12 minutes intro of like, this is what you actually need to get started. But I haven't done this before, so I don't really know how to actually get started with all of this. So the last days, I've been reading a lot of documentation. I've been checking the AI Copilot to try to figure out like, okay, if I do like this, does this works? And the AI Copilot doesn't give correct answers for everything. So that's tricky. So for example, if I ask the AI Copilot, is it supported to run on uh, my appliances 6400? The answer is no. But if I check other documentation, it's yes. And I know it works on, on 6400, so the AI Copilot is wrong. Um, and that's to be expected. But I also answer, I also ask them questions like, okay, if I already have an existing platform of R81.10, and it says that I need to do a clean installation. Okay, can I do a clean installation from CPUs? Um, uh, or do I need to do a clean installation from the Lighthouse Management? Or do I need to do a clean installation from like putting USB memory in the appliance box? Okay. So if I get that up and running, when I need to add the second member, do the second member needs to be on R82, like factory default? Or can it be on R81.10, R81.20? Uh, to actually get noticed by this cluster and be picked up and be uh, combined into this um, uh, Elastic Excel. And also, how does it work with virtual IPs? So, depending on how I ask questions in the AI Copilot, it says like, yeah, it's not recommended to do this. 
And if I ask the question in a different way, it says, yes, it's supported. You can do like this. So as I have, I have been trying to figure this out for the last three, four hours, five hours, maybe. Um, so my question to you guys is more or less, um, do you want to see me fail and do all this attempt and really understand my how i think when i sh do this sort of stuff um because it will be good to to learn and understand and i think many of you guys have the same questions um or do you just want how to guides because if you just want how to guides it's quite i think it's pretty boring it's quite hard to do good how to guides because you need to re record them to get the correct flow. If I can add, <laughs> if I can add failures, the videos become longer, but I think they are a bit cooler and I think that you learn more. Um, I also ask like checkpoint, uh, can I have like, can I have like a meeting with you guys to like figure stuff out, just ask questions, but they didn't want to have that because they want to see the, like the initial feeling and initial, like, how does it work for someone that has not played with it for the last years that they have? How does it work for someone that has played with checkpoint a lot, but haven't seen this new and only taking care, only seen like official documents. I mean, I have seen a few more documents and I have been in a few more trainings for it, but still. Um, yeah, I'm rambling a lot now, so <laughs> uh, please comment below on how you actually want to, on how you want me to continue this video series. So I think that's it for this and um, I hope to see you in the next one and uh, I'll give it a few days for you to figure out like or for you to vote on how I should continue this video series and then I will see if I will listen to you. <laughs> so thank you for watching and I have, so thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Take care.